Hello, everyone. I must welcome you all to the webinar series Future You Set Your Career Compass Right with Exports Insight. And I'm Kadiani, your host for this webinar. So, today our topic is how to become a management consultant. And in this webinar, you will find out about the career trajectory in management consulting, uh, how to get hired by MBB firms, uh, skills to have in order to excel in this field. Uh, MBB versus Big Four and more. So let's welcome our speaker today. We have Sharad Bang. He's a senior associate at BCG, which is Boston Consulting Group. He's an alumnus of Accelerai Jamshedpur. Uh, Sharad worked at EY and SR before pursuing an MBA and becoming a consultant at BCG. So uh, thank you, Sharad. So uh, please take us through your career trajectory, uh, right from BCom to Accelerai, and what made you decide to go for an MBA? Sure. First of all, thank you, Kalyani, for having me here. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you again. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'll 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 just you know directly jump onto the answer. Hmm. So my career trajectory has been I am a chartered accountant. Yeah. Uh, so I did my chartered accountancy and my cost accountancy, which is like cost and management accountant. Mm. I was pursuing these two degrees simultaneously while I was also pursuing BCom mm. in the parallel. So uh, while I was doing all this, I did not have any clue about MBB or how to get into all these firms and everything. And then when I started working with EY is when I realized these sort of opportunities are, all, are also available. Uh, so while I was working at EY, I decided to go for an MBA. Mm. Uh, having done my MBA now, I am at XLRI. So this has been the career trajectory for me. Okay. So, um, okay. Now that, you know, if you were already working as a consultant with EY right. uh, before an MBA. So right. uh, was there any particular reason for you to then pursue an MBA because since you know you were already uh, in consulting and now also you are of course you know with the MBB firms so but uh, right. what exactly was the reason and also um, yeah so a lot of a lot of people do an MBA to have a career transition but you stuck to uh, consulting so yeah so what was then the reason for you to uh, get into Accelerai? Uh, right. So there were two, three reasons. Mm. Uh, so first and foremost, I, uh, while we pursue CA, we have mm. to undergo three year articleship and my articleship was a specialization in taxation. So mm. when I joined EY there also, while I was doing consultancy, but it was predominantly tax consulting. And to be very precise, it was, uh, indirect tax consulting. So that was becoming a very niche area for me. Mm. And I did not want to take it up you know, take up a specialization so early in my career, just, you know, one or two years in the, in the professional career, I didn't want to take up anything as a career. Mm. And on top of that, while I was trying to look out for other opportunities, but having spent four years in a domain, three years in article ship, and then one year at EY in a particular yeah. domain, uh, it was becoming very difficult for me to switch because, because okay. everybody knows that, you know, you have, you have knowledge of that one particular field. So if you want to get out of that field, it becomes very difficult. So I tried my hands in um, in SR's executive leadership program, which is like a general management program, as they call it in MBA. It's mm. a it's a genman role, or or if you want to put it that way, it was a management trainee role, sort of thing to be precise, which actually gave me some liberation from taxation. Uh, and I started exploring other things like finance. I was doing some project modeling there. So I, I started liking all that, and I, and, I, and I thought that you know probably doing an MBA would take me a notch above everything else mm. so the kind of opportunities that are open for me now they were not open for me back then so this is why i decided to switch from ey to mm. mba and then uh, to proper uh, management consulting right okay yeah so since you said proper management consulting uh what uh how different are the job roles uh that you've had as a consultant and ey and as a uh, senior associate at uh, BCG. Right. So, mm. at, so the roles were very different. Like mm. the roles are very different. So okay. whenever you join as a tax consultant in TY, you are dealing in one particular 
area which is for example which for me was taxation and then you deal with a particular set of clients and they are your only clients till the time you are there mm. so for the one full year uh, while i was there one one and a half year while i was there i was handling with a particular i was dealing with a particular set of clients which are like three or four clients and i was doing the same work for them over and over again which was you know uh, filing their tax returns and giving them the routine consultancy so it was becoming very monotonous for me right uh consulting at bcg or any mbb firm for that matter is very different your clients get switched every 6 months 8 months on an average and then you are dealing with a new problem every day okay. because mm. because we are literally dealing with business problems and business problems can never be constant mm. so we solve one problem then we jump on to another problem then we jump on to another problem so that way it gives us a wider exposure also and i am able to explore multiple areas and not just restrict to myself uh, restricting myself to one particular area which for example was tax at ty okay okay uh, uh before mba how many years of experience you've had uh, work experience you've had uh, i had around 21 months of experience okay okay uh, so around 16 months uh, i was at ey and mm-hmm. around 5 months i was at esa before before i finally decided i wanted to go for mba okay 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 uh, so now that you know you were uh, you were you were talking about you know at ey you were a tax consultant is it because uh, you were from that uh, particular background and that's why or do they also have other uh, consulting uh, roles so ey uh, yeah. does have other consulting roles as well okay uh, and i had even tried for one of those which was you know sort of uh, so they have a practice called process improvement practice which is basically they are trying to improve the processes of plans reducing the cost and everything hmm. uh, but again i had a 3 year experience in taxation hmm. so okay. that was hmm. what was a you know sort of hindrance for me that i was Correct. not able to switch to anything else hmm. okay 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 so um so basically you, know, you two had the uh, had a similar trajectory wherein you know you wanted a transition and an mba kind of gave you that transition within right. the uh, within the same function but in a different role okay so um uh, can you tell us about the functions of management uh, consulting so what are the job duties this is like a, a like a blanket uh, you know answer if you can give overall how exactly right. it is yeah so see very very broadly hmm. we are just there solving problems for our clients okay this is literally what we are doing now how do we solve problems so there are two ways to solve a problem one is design, designing the strategy as to how to solve and then the second phase is implementing that strategy okay i have told you this is what you are supposed to do but mm-hmm. how to do who is going to do because you know if if it was so simple then the then our clients would have done it themselves right mm-hmm. so these are two broadly the things that we do designing the strategy so designing strategy involves a lot of you know doing calls with experts doing research Mm-hmm. uh referring to other cases which bcg has done and then you know you know taking insights from there okay. so so that and also a lot of thinking part if i if i may call it mm-hmm. uh where you are trying to figure out a solution for a problem and in all likelihood the problem is going to be one of the kind which has not occurred before because if it would have occurred before it would have it would have already been solved correct and you know the execution mm-hmm. part we deal very closely with client counterparts we tell them at every step what they are supposed to do and you know uh, if there's a if there's a constant follow up we have to do or if there's a project management plan that we have to run to ensure that mm. the things are on time so okay. these are broadly the things that we do as management consultants okay okay and uh, what's uh, your uh, what's a typical day uh, as a in in this field for you at least at uh, bcg uh kalyan to be honest there is no typical day okay. uh, i don't think there has been any day when i have you know followed the same schedule all throughout the day okay. but i'll just tell you a few okay. things that we do on a regular basis for example we do a lot of calls we okay. do calls with our client counterparts to understand their problem uh, then we we do calls with them to understand their data because we are dealing with a lot of data right if you are if you are solving a problem then mm. you need to you need to check the data where the problem is occurring so that mm-hmm. is where we deal with our client counterparts a lot and then we we deal a lot with experts okay. experts in that particular domain so so these are all the calls that we make then mm-hmm. then there is a lot of excel involved 
uh, as in you know when we are analyzing data and not just excel like excel also has its limitation so when when we are dealing with uh, a large data set there are multiple other tools that we are working with mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. then the most important part in our in our job is slide writing which is you know making making slides making ppts in okay. a fashion mm-hmm. which is very crisp and it it tells the story very clearly what we are trying to convey okay so that is the most important part of it we may we may do a lot of analysis we may do a lot of everything expert calls but if you are not able to present it properly uh, then you know that is a that is a challenge for us so we do that and then of course we go and talk to our clients and present them the problems the the core of the problem and how can it be solved mm. so typically these are the activities that we do on a daily basis okay okay uh, there's a question about uh, is it possible for tier 3 mba uh, colleges specializing in operations management with average academics to get into management consulting so you can answer this along with uh, what uh, what is the kind of profile that usually the top firms in management consulting top let's not talk about the mbb bit we will take that separately right. but overall like the top consulting firms are looking for and um, yeah if somebody is not from the top uh b schools is there a possibility for them and how do they go with it yeah right so i'll i'll tell you very you know very clearly the process mm. and the and the profile building thing mm. so see there has to be one of the two things either okay. there has to be a spike so what do you mean by spike spike is basically some significant achievement that should be there so for example yeah. it for me it was i had an all india rank 5 in my cma final examination mm-hmm. so that was a spike for me that you know mm-hmm. this guy has an all india rank then okay. the second thing was i had constant 90 plus accads all throughout my uh, you know uh, academic journey right from school till everything okay. and i had, and even even all my ca examinations i had cleared in first attempt so mm-hmm. if i may put it that way academic portion was my spike so i used to keep okay. it at the top that you know hmm. this is my core strength hmm. so either you need to have that and and spike can be non academic also you okay. can be a state level uh, you know badminton player Got or it. you can be a national level swimmer hmm. or you know or anything of that sort which basically sets you aside from all the other pool of candidates okay and then the second thing is you need to have diversity in your cv so what do i mean by diversity so if i was good at academics hmm. that does not mean i can do only academics all throughout my life i right. i had hmm. to also show the other thing so so the profile building is actually a process that takes place so i had joined multiple ngos you okay. know i had and this is yeah. this is before uh, your mba this is before mba this okay. is before mm-hmm. mba so mm-hmm. so i had uh, so you know covid was at its peak at that time mm-hmm. so i was participating in a lot of initiatives okay uh, so that also helped me and on top of that i actually started you know running marathons and everything okay. so so that was also something which which showed you know like like i am actually good at other other parts as well and not okay. just mm. so while i i would have been average at everything else mm-hmm. so marathon you know probably a lot of people run or mm. for example uh, you know during covid times a lot of people had done you know good deeds yeah. so so that might not be the you know outstanding part so i had one spike in my cv and then mm. i used to show my diversity ki i have this but okay. i also have these 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 okay. so that is how i built my profile and everything mm-hmm. uh, coming mm-hmm. to the question yeah uh, uh the question is precisely uh I'll, is i'll tell you the question again yeah, is it possible uh, for yeah. tier 3 for tier 3 yeah yeah right. yeah so yes it is possible mm. uh see i will not give false hopes it is very difficult to get into mbb because yeah. mbb has certain you know uh cut off so we'll MBB. talk about the mbbs uh afterwards yes. mbb and b4 uh, big four so in profile building you're talking about one is of course uh to have consistency in whichever way like you know you had academic consistency and a uh, diversified uh, profile that always helps and that consistency can be in academics or in something else and of course a spike probably right so right. yeah so so yeah so keep that in mind and yeah if you can show that you know you are a uh, you know uh, like a rounded person with different things that you've done from right. yeah 
of course unless you are not interested in an ngo and all that please don't just go for the profile yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you need to be yeah. very uh, yeah you doing to, an interview you need to be involved in that process yes, not yeah. just doing it for the sake of yeah, doing it yeah it should be convincing basically right, if it's there right. on your profile okay cool yeah and uh, there is a question about um what can be the roadway after bcom honors ug completion to become a management consultant so yeah your but of course you know you apart from bcom you also did so many other things within uh, you know commerce right. so what if the person has just done bcom on uh, become that is honors? that is absolutely fine you know you can you can give a shot at cat directly and try to aim for one of the top 5 top 10 colleges okay and otherwise also you know uh, so so in my personal experience i would suggest to go for some work experience at least mm-hmm. a year year and a half because that gives you a wider perspective when you go into mba college and then yeah. you know you can while you are working you can simultaneously build a profile prepare for these examinations and then get into a college that is pretty simple so mm-hmm. you do not need so not not everybody is a ca or a cm or something right in mm-hmm. a batch of 360 there were only four cas but there were uh, there there were 350 plus people who were from other profiles also yeah. so that is fine that that absolutely uh, should not be a, a cause of concern mm-hmm. okay uh, there was a uh, okay uh, how about uh, somebody was asking also about how can i build profile during cat preparation so you must have also prepared for cat and then for zat also yes. and all that so were you doing anything during that period uh, so as i said mm-hmm. i was i had joined ngos okay this was that around this that was, time this okay. was during mm-hmm. around that time when i realized that i need to have everything you know a diversity in my mm-hmm. in my resume okay okay um uh, can a, a medical student become a, a management consultant Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Of course, I mean, I mean, no cause of concern. So, I, I personally know two people. One from I am Ahmedabad, and one from mm-hmm. Exelar. Okay. Who are from medical background, and then okay. they decided to switch to the, uh, you know, to the MBA domain, and mm-hmm. now they both are in, uh, MBBs. So, okay. and and in fact, in fact, let me tell you that these firms love diversity. so uh-huh. you know in a batch of 360 people if there's one one guy who is from a medical background because there are a lot of health tech cases also going on right medical okay. in- industry cases pharma cases mm-hmm. so those are the kind of okay. cases where bcg would be happily you know want to have someone who has that context and that background right. so yes okay. you can ha- you can go there okay uh, coming from an engineering background work for first 11 months after completing graduation and have a career gap of 1.5 years how can i improve my profile for b schools uh see career gap is something mm. you know which is sadly not taken very well in india and i feel that it it should not be a cause of concern ideally but we are mm. not living in an ideal world mm. uh so what you need to do is you need to show in that career gap what did you do so so if that guy has taken career gap he would have taken it for some purpose you know for something so there are a lot of people who take career gaps to pursue upsc or other you know civil services examinations or mm. for pursuing startups or for you know trying out different things and then if it doesn't work out that is fine then they come back to their professional career mm. so that gap should be justifiable that you know okay. if if i took that gap this is what i this is what i did during that uh, during that time and what all what all were my learnings if you can justify that that is absolutely fine and mm. even after that you know profile building thing is the is the same thing try to do as many things as possible right. you know yeah hmm. yes, that. Hmm. okay uh, uh, do you have to travel a lot as a management consultant well i do not have to travel because hmm. fortunately my clients are in mumbai but management involve management consulting yeah. involves a lot of travel you need to hmm. you know take every day uh morning flights evening flights monday morning you are flying friday mm. evening you are flying, flying back and then you mm. have to travel to multiple locations so for example i have a client who has offices in four locations so i have to travel to okay. all four of them sometimes mm. here sometimes there mm. so yes it involves a lot of traveling and a lot of early morning and late night flights yeah okay so how is the work life balance uh, in consulting uh well speaking of work life balance it is not a 9 to 5 job for mm. sure yeah it involves a lot more rigor a lot more you know so so very honestly i'll tell you that you know it is it is not easy it is a good 12 to 14 hour work day mm. uh now but the good part is that the work is interesting you know if you have that ability or the stamina to you know work for longer hours mm. uh and if you also have that intellect uh 
a capability to you know think about things for a good span of 12 to 14 hours mm. then that is something that you know that that is a very good thing that that you can have so okay. the work life balance if i tell you see weekends are mostly not working uh, okay. unless unless it's something very urgent or something mm. and weekdays it's a 12 to 14 hour day okay uh, but it has a lot of perks also so mm. that way it balances out everything okay okay uh, uh, so um, uh, how do you uh, can you tell us the uh, career progression from entry level to top level in consulting how do you go about it uh, and usually uh, what is the what are the chances of uh, somebody who's a management consultant to become a cxo or a ceo yeah uh, sure so yeah. first the so entry level yeah. to yeah how do you rise so within management consulting Hmm. I'm basically at entry level. Hmm. So from entry level, you go on to a consultant. So I'm a senior associate, right? Hmm. So the hmm. designation that you call it is consultant, who is basically a gap, a bridge between the the project leader and hmm. the entry level guy. And then there's this project leader. So project leader also has different, you know, uh, names. For example, first you are project leader, then you become principal. Hmm. So that way, and then you go on to become partner finally. Hmm. And after partner, so once you become a partner, you go on to become managing director and partner. So this is the sort of career trajectory. So becoming an MDP is like almost hmm. a 10 year, 10 to 12 year sort of process. Right. Uh, so this is the career trajectory. So it's it's just going to, you know, like at this level, I'm executing things at a, at a project leader level. I'm going to, you know, run the execution in the sense I will have people to work with me. Hmm. And then at an, at an partner or an MDP level, you just need to, you know, have a supervision on whether the things are whether the things are going right or wrong. You do not get into uh, day-to-day activities and stuff. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's. Uh, there are a lot of questions uh, coming from uh, you know on on profile building. So let's take these questions along sure. with uh, the kind of profile that gets uh, you know usually be you know the one that you, somebody would be uh, looking at and might get selected sure. by the MBB or the big force. So overall, uh, what are the kind of profiles that they're looking for and what gets really, you know, uh, how can they stand out? Yeah. Uh, so, I, you know, like they'll, they, there's going hmm. to be some repetition because, you know, again, yeah, yeah. they hmm. are looking out for number one, some spikes, hmm. something on your CV, which makes you stand apart, which is different, which is not hmm. routine. Hmm. And then some diversity on different aspects as to, as I already mentioned, you know, hmm. working hmm. sports or anything, some competition, some case hmm. comps or anything of hmm. that sort. Uh, so, so what I'll tell you is they are not looking for, uh, for profiles who have not done you know, not exactly that way, but they're not looking for, you know, sort of profiles who are not good at anything. Low, for example, hmm. a cat's wise also if you're average, for example. Hmm. But if you have done something significant in sports, so I know people in my college who are, who are average at a cat's, but they were even national level pairs or, you know, they okay. had done their own startup or something. So hmm. those are the kind of profiles that okay. definitely get considered because, okay. you know, MBBs and and before also looking for people who have who have some diversity and some diverse experience mm. to bring along mm. with them. Okay. Uh, so and and I would say you know uh, if if you are concerned with building your profile, then mm. this is the time to start. Mm. Go out, do whatever you can. You know, join join an NGO. You know, start start playing sports, start running marathons to get some certificates and some medals. Mm. Uh, Apart from that, there are multiple other things you can participate in competition. So, for example, if people uh, who are in colleges, they they are, so colleges and you know corporates typically organize a lot of competitions. For example, you know there was this HUL competition, then there was this Tata Motors competition. Okay, yeah. Start participating in those competitions. There are equity research competitions for for people with finance background. They can participate okay. in those sort of competitions. So basically try to show that you know you are not just doing a catch you are doing a lot more stuff and mm. you are a lot more proactive and interested in things so that is the way to go forward so what i would say is try to get you know again not saying that you know get into everything and then do nothing in a proper mm. manner mm. pick up two or three things but pursue them diligently 
in in a manner that you know if somebody questions you on the on those aspects so for example i'm writing that i did a lot of you know case competitions mm. so if case competitions comes i can actually tell them that you know these are all the case competition that i did how do i build my strategy you know how do i go about things mm-hmm. so do diligently but okay. try to show that you have done a few different things uh, that okay. way okay uh, are there any uh, specific uh, consulting competitions as well are there any yes 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 so all, uh, all the all the big four firms you know they have their annual okay. competition okay yeah 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 so uh, mbb doesn't have, have big four has mbb typically doesn't have big ah, four okay. firm l- like okay. like i participate in this pwc competition also okay hmm. uh, yeah so i uh, i participate in that i was i i went till the college level but then i could not uh, clear that hmm. Hmm. but the thing is that at least even at a college level if you are you know even at your if for hmm. people who are in their uh, who are in their colleges hmm. uh, for them if if you know you can actually win it even at at a, at a college level not national or state level that is also fine i mean that is also a good achievement for people who are in their professional career already who are you know in organ working in organizations mm-hmm. so an award like you know performer of the year or star performer or something of that so that also helps them to stand uh, stand out mm, okay since you know you already had a solid background with fina- in finance so when you were selecting the subjects were you going more for those other subjects that are non finance so that you know you in, in in during your mba so that you know you get a better yes so mm. so i had a dual specialization mba which is usually okay. there in most of the colleges mm. so i did my specialization in finance and okay. sales and marketing and why did i take these subjects because mm. sales and marketing is something which is not my domain at all Hmm. so i wanted to you know sort of uh, take up that challenge hmm. uh, and and that was the only time where i could actually learn sales and marketing despite not being from that background hmm. and finance i took because you know i had to balance both things so if i'm taking something which i'm not good at then i must take something which i'm good at so things get comfortable there okay uh, let's take more questions on okay mbb versus uh, big four what's the major difference and why uh, a lot of people feel that mbv is like the uh, it's it's very very difficult to get hired by them and big four probably would be relatively easier is that true or is it a myth and yeah what what's the yeah the difference between these two? uh yeah so yes it is you know it is true that it is difficult to get into mbb relatively as compared to big four firms mm. uh because as i said that mbbs have certain cutoffs in terms of our acad or in terms of a profile or something mm. uh those cutoffs are slightly lower uh for big four firms now what makes these different is that management consulting firms are predominantly or entirely focusing on solving problems for people so it is their niche okay. mm. but for big four firms for most of them the case has been that they were predominantly audit and tax firms Hmm. could decided to pivot into management consulting as well given that the nature of the role is pretty much the same that you are dealing with clients and you are helping them out that way so that is the primary difference of course there's a difference in the pay scale between mbb firms and big four firms which, ah, is, okay. which is widely known hmm. which is okay. uh, yeah and apart from that you are doing a lot of strategy pieces also with mbb uh mm-hmm. but you know uh, for a, so what a lot of clients do is the so i said that there are two phases right one is preparing the strategy and one is the mm-hmm. execution okay. so at times what happens is that you know the strategy has been prepared by one of the mbb firms but it is being executed by a big four firm mm-hmm. that is also it happens okay. so so this is the predominantly the difference between uh, both of these firms and for management consulting mbb firms have a worldwide reputation you know like mm-hmm. everybody knows what mckinsey does or what dc does or what bain does Mm. but you know whenever and 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 let me also put it this way when you asked me what i was doing at ey i had to mention specifically that i am a tax consultant right okay, because yeah. it involves mm. a lot of things and i was doing tax amongst that mm. but when you when you talk to someone from mckinsey who is doing management consulting you don't ask him which field there is only one field which is management consulting right front end consulting okay. so that is the okay. difference okay 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 so uh, uh, top five things bcg looks for in a candidate if not from top p schools for an associate consultant role uh top five things that bcg looks uh, do think... they consider 
any B school from the, uh, you know, unless they are from the top tier, like the top 10 B schools or something, uh, would they consider? Not they really. For these? Yeah, so they might not come to the campus, right? So Yes. So yeah. in that case, the candidates might have to, you know, sort of uh, try laterally mm. uh, through internal referrals and everything. Correct. Uh, that is the uh, that is how it goes. But yeah, but what do they look for in candidate? Uh, is again, you know, uh, so the career trajectory is very important hmm. as to why do you want to join a management consulting firm and why does it make sense for you to join it? You know, hmm. so for example, for me, it was pretty straightforward that I was doing tax at TY and I wanted do not I did, did not want to basically specialize so early in my career. So okay. I chose management consulting, which gives me option to explore different areas and then choose an area of uh, specialization. Right. Uh, so you need to have a very good, you know, career trajectory. You need to have good academics. You need to have diverse uh, this thing. Mm. You mm. need to have a very strong problem solving approach. So okay. we are literally solving problems, right? Mm. So you should be good at identifying the areas uh, of problems you know you should be able to structure your thoughts very well because if you are messed up in your thoughts then you will not be able to solve a problem you are only going to complicate Correct. it Correct. so these are the these are the things that you know mm. uh, that that uh, typically firms uh, look mm. for mm. Firms. Mm. okay now that you're talking about you know problem solving skills that one should have so what are the can you uh, give us like uh, three hard skills and three soft skills that one should ideally have in order to succeed as a management consultant and maybe you know they can work on it as well yeah and if they don't have it that is yes hmm. so see, hard uh, skills, first hard skills yeah yeah so hard skills first excel second powerpoint okay hands down you need to know these two tools okay there is no way you can not know these tools these two tools and still survive in consulting very mm. honestly so these are uh, the two things and mm. third, I think in terms of skill, skill, there is no hard skill asset, but you know, mm. you should have some uh, knowledge or you should, you should be, you, so I, I can put it that we should have good research skills. If okay. I can call it a, if I can call it a hard skill. So research skill, as in you are dealing with a new problem and you do not have any background or context to the problem, right? Correct. Yeah. And, and typically in such kind of setups, you do not find people coming and sitting and explaining you from scratch. What is the problem? You need to mm. research on your own. So you should have that ability to research, to read up stuff, to, you know, go on the internet or to analyze the data that mm. way. So okay. these are pretty much the three hard skills, if I may call mm. it. How much of numbers? I mean, you have to work with a lot of numbers, I believe, right? Yes. So it, it varies project to project. With so data, I have basically. Done two projects. Right? Yeah. Mm. So mm. I have done two projects. On one project, I had to extensively deal with a lot of numbers, mm. heavy Excel files, you know, Excel mm. taking a lot of time to processing and everything. Okay. So yes. Mm. And, and then, you know, you need to crunch those numbers that, and you need to generate some insights and you need to drive very, you know, like very coherent insights. As in, if I I am given a last data set, I mm. should analyze it. I should specifically tell that this is the problem. This has been the, you know, this has been the trend of the problem. Mm. This is when the problem pops up, for example, something of that sort. Mm. So, okay. for example, if you, if you, if you see the revenue numbers or something, then you know, which is the time when the revenue is going down and then what is the reason you need to identify and infer those mm. insights. Mm. Okay. And soft skills. Yes, soft skill, number mm. one, communication and presence. Okay. You need to have it because you are, you know, dealing with the top-notch clients. Uh, mm. It's it's a client-facing job, so you need to mm. have communication skills. And uh, a lot of times you're actually dealing with senior client counterparts who are, you know, CXO level people. Mm. So when you're going in front of them, you need to have that. That That is very bare minimum. That is Correct. the first thing yeah. that you need to have that, have that communication skills. Second, I would say... Uh, as a soft skill is basically uh, ability to sit for longer hours because as I said that this is not a you know 9 to 5 job mm. and you need to have that uh, stamina to sit mm. for long hours and also work during those long hours that is very mm. important Okay. Uh, and the third thing that I would call is structured thoughts so the okay. interview process of MBB is a very mm. long process. It's a month-long process. Okay. 
so so i'll 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 just yeah ha can you explain tell, this ha ha to explain this thing i'll just i'll just tell you what is the process hmm. so what happens is once you get a shortlist you are allotted a buddy from the company okay and then oh. during the course of one one and a half months when your final hmm. interview is scheduled before that that buddy practices cases with you like four five six cases now what are cases cases are basically business problems hmm which they want you to solve in a 30 to 45 minute sort of time frame okay so so for example i tell you that your client is a steel company and they are hmm. facing losses hmm you need to identify the reason and give some recommendations now i do not have a steel background right okay hmm. so so in that 30 to 45 minute time frame i need to identify the problem and give some recommendations now how do i identify the problem you need to go very in a very structured manner so for example if i say profitability hmm. so profit can be because either the sales are down or the cost are high hmm. so he says that no there is no problem with the sales the cost are rising so cost my i can go fixed cost or variable cost he says no variable cost is fine we are dealing with fixed cost fixed cost can then i'll further go to you know is it is it rent is it employee salary what is it that way hmm. you need to be very structured in your thoughts because mm. as i said if you're dealing with very large data sets or if you're dealing with complex problems what mm. stands you apart you know from from other people or from other consultants is that how quickly are you able to wrap everything in a structured fashion and present it to the client correct okay so that okay. is a very important uh, skill that you need to have but the good part is that during that one month long process you practice a lot hmm. of cases so like with buddy i am doing four five cases but i am also practicing cases internally with my friends okay so over that one month period i did at least 60 to 70 cases 60 to 70 business problems i solved across different industries aviation steel pharma uh, you know uh, ott platforms anything all sort of cases i did and you know i was actually by the end of the process they actually test whether you have been able to learn from the process whether you have been able to get into that mode of being able to structure your thoughts and present it properly right. so these are the these are okay. the top things that you need okay okay uh, uh, how is the salary growth for leadership management programs is it comparable to mbbs a leadership management program depends which company you are referring to so if you are okay. you know sort of uh, referring to like uh, programs like tcs or reliance or aditya billa these are pretty good leadership management mm-hmm. programs and if you are you know if you are interested in general management you should definitely go for one of them uh, okay. for sure but then there are also you know sort of not so big conglomerates who also have have their leadership management programs so mm-hmm. they are obviously not paying as much as these companies okay okay and uh, are there any books that you know uh, you could probably recommend our uh, people our attendees uh, something that you know if they read they'll understand uh, consulting better the role of the, uh, the function itself um, and something which is also kind of interesting also to read yes so uh, there are a few well, number one there are a few case solving books okay so what are case solving books basically they have different cases in them where you know mm. transcript of the interviewer and the interview mm. is is laid down there you know okay. so what you can do is you can probably go through one of those and these books are released by all the colleges also um, all the okay. iim that mm. even the you know ecb school this that all the global b schools also that okay. is one so if you are actually interested you can actually go through them and see their thought process how they are able to you know solve those problems that is number one then there's a book called the mckinsey way which is on consulting uh, you mckinsey know it, way okay the mckinsey way which shows basically you know how does management consulting work and what all uh, mm. things happen in everything everything and apart from that i'm i'm forgetting this name there was a book which i had referred to uh, uh i'll I, i'm just not i'm mm. just not getting the name but but he's a very famous management consultant who has okay. written a book on how to crack cases okay okay yeah so that mm. is that is a very nice book Hmm. Okay. Uh, can I find cases somewhere to practice uh, solving? Yes. 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 You hmm. you just Google it. You know, for example, Excel R I uh, consult uh, Excel R I hmm. uh, this uh, cases book, or for example, I M A case book, I M B case book, or or even if you follow the LinkedIn pages or something, whenever these institutes release their so it's an annual it's an annual cycle where they hmm. you know add new cases to their books. 
depending on you know so for example whenever an interview cycle gets over they ask candidates mm-hmm. what sort of cases were they asked and then they compile a full book a full repository out of those cases okay. so i am a case book i am b case book excel ri case book isb case book these are top 3 4 case books that you can actually refer to okay okay uh, is there any uh, so a uh, few people are also asking about you know uh, if data understanding data is very important in consulting so apart from mba uh, are there any certification courses and anything that you know they could probably do in within the data science bed so that you know they can understand how to crunch uh, data and then find solutions yeah so mm. there are a lot of courses actually so i did a i did two three courses from mm. coursera okay one one is this macquarie university uh, excel uh, course which is you know like a good uh, beginner intermediate advanced one advanced two it's a it's a very long course mm. uh, so i did that i did a, a course on uh, tableau because it's mm. a you know good data representation tool and apart from that you can of course go for you know data analytics sort of courses Okay. where the basic objective should be that you're dealing with large data so how quickly can you deal with it and what sort of insights you know and and so what typically happens is at the end of that course they ask you a few questions okay and you need to give answer to those questions based on that data set so how quickly can you do it is the is the key to uh, basically learning this stuff okay okay so uh, uh, can you tell us a uh, of uh, one challenging situation probably uh, so far in consulting and how did you solve it uh one challenging problem so i'll i'll tell you a challenging problem which was really challenging for me uh, uh. so uh, i was very new to consulting and uh. i was placed on a very technical case which was you know dealing with the metals and mining okay a uh, large giant mm. and i had to solve a problem for for that client so i'll i'll very you know on a very broad level I'll explain you the problem so the problem was that we wanted to increase the output from the plant so we wanted to increase the uptime of the plant so if for example there are x hours available so the plant was not op- operating at 100% capacity it was only operating at around 90 91% capacity and we wanted to take it to 95% now the challenge here was that i am a chartered accountant mm-hmm. i i am from a commerce background i have no clue how mining industry or you know metallurgy industry works correct and then when you are thrown into that situation and you have no background nothing hmm. then how do you figure this out so and it was my first case so it was very challenging for me hmm. but then what i did i did a lot of expert calls not hmm. to get answers but only to understand the process okay how does a plant work so even in a plant there are multiple parts multiple sections right hmm. what hmm. is the function of this section what is the function of this section what is the function of this section so mm. while it was very difficult for me to get into the technical jargons and mm. because you know the the engineers who are working there they have been in that industry yeah, right. for 50 mm. years and i am literally a week old in the industry so i cannot match their level of you know detailed mm. uh, idea and everything so what i did i did a lot of expert calls and then i spent a lot of time with client counterparts asking them each and everything so for example the plant is four parts i'm working on one part so even in one part i would go through the process end to end i would note down all my questions and then i would pick up a client counterpart and ask him all those questions that you know what is the use of this part how does this part work what is the average frequency when this part you know uh, wones out or you know mm. breaks down and right. then that way I, i was trying to figure out the answers mm. that where exactly is the problem lying which part is it which which requires frequent repair and maintenance and how are they doing it that mm-hmm. way i did a lot of expert calls with experts from japan and korea also okay because they were using the same plant that we were using and they had pretty much high uptime ratio okay so this is how you you know sort of mm. solve this problem uh, mm. when you are thrown in entirely mm. but tell me uh, isn't this like a bit um, uh, challenging as such in every case that as a consultant you will be getting people you know you will be expected to give solutions to the people who are experts in that field or who have been in that field for a very very long time and then you know you come in and you are giving solutions so how do you uh, yeah how do you handle that pressure and you know is there any 
form of uh, any sense of that feeling as in you know the other the on the other side of the table you know they are saying oh how would you I mean that that attitude yes, is yes, there yes. and does that affect how do you handle that kind of that pressure and that stress that oh uh, what are they even thinking lord knows <laughs> so yeah so the thing is here we have one quality which a lot of people do not have as management mm. consultants mm. the one quality that we have is we are very quickly able to navigate through the process okay. you know go through the process identify where is the problem and mm. then work on that problem okay so yes it is you know uh, it is sort of challenging for us mm. uh, and even the client is like you are here like you have come here like a week ago yeah. we have been working mm. for 15 years we yeah, are not right. able to solve the problem how are you going to solve it mm. yes that mm. is true that is 100% true but you know even after 15 years were you able to you know you had all the data were you able yeah. to you know crunch that data and derive some right. some output mm. or some you know coherent insight out of that data right. or were you able to actually talk to other people other plants you know like i talked to experts from japan and korea mm. were you able to do it and try, and did you try to figure out a solution to this problem so i am not challenging i am not challenging the technical competence of the client okay but the problem solving skills that i have is usually not possessed, possessed by my client counterpart yeah, and that is what makes us stand apart right. it's exactly. not the technical competency mm. Mm. but how do you uh, how do you connect with these experts is it like the company only helping as in the yeah, consulting yeah, yeah. firm so as we, in bcgs so have expert expert ah, okay. portals and everything okay that is there. okay okay all right okay any any particular management consulting tips as in uh, to prepare uh, right now as in if they want to get nothing no. nothing so just is, focus yeah. just focus on your profile and your cat scores yeah. you don't have to do anything the the interview process or the thought structuring process that i'm telling you mm. you will get to learn during okay. mba itself it's yeah. a it's a long process you will get to learn it but for now just try to you know focus on the cat zat or whatever exam you are targeting correct yeah i mean uh, to get into uh, any if you are aiming for mbb uh, or even for the that matter big fours uh, getting into a good top b school is important because you is, know you will get campus yeah, right. <laughs> yeah you'll be hired uh, from the campus so from first, the campus yeah, right yeah, and hiring getting that. hired from campus yeah. is way easier than you know correct. getting into lateral hiring process mm-hmm. so just try to get into a good college that is all you need to do right now all right okay okay yeah so uh, that's all we have time for uh, today and um, thank you all the attendees for the questions and thank you sharad bang thank you so much for giving all the insights on how to become a management consultant thank you thank you kalyani it was pleasure talking to you